Welcome to This Week in Sim Racing, July 23rd, 2011 edition. I'm Sean Cole. And I'm Darren Ganji. And This Week in Sim Racing is sponsored by iRacing. Make sure to get signed up now to check out iRacing 2.0. Some great stuff coming out. And you can get three months for the price of one by heading to our website at Inside Sim Racing and clicking on any of the iRacing banners you see. And it's definitely time to do that. 2.0, like you said, right around the corner. But first up on today's show, we're looking at cars, the community assisted race Sim? Racing Sim? Sure it isn't the Disney deal? No, it's definitely not the Cars Disney thing. I'm just kidding. I <laughs> but this is a new Sim by Slightly Mad Studios, and they're going to actually be selling shares in their Sim. So you could actually be a part owner out there. And it, you, it ranges in value from five to just about anything you want to donate. Interesting and concept. It, it is. I mean, you have R Factor. They depend on the modding community for most of their content. You got like iRacing, they depend on their membership community to further develop the sim. And now you got a company that's just looking for startup cash, I guess, to develop the sim, which will be coming out in probably about a little over a year. You know, what's going to be interesting is as vocal as our community is, you've heard the saying, too many shifts in the kitchen. It's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting project. It's funny how a little money might entitle people to a lot of opinion. And if you want to check out what's been going on with that, go to No Grip Racing and there's a uh, Forum thread, Ian Bell of Slightly Mad's been really involved and, mm -hmm. you know, they created the name there and all that stuff, so it's really I, cool, actually. And they got those screenshots of the Lotus 49, and I'm going to bring it up. We talked about it. It just reminds me so much of a sim from, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, the... Uh, the sim that never happened? The Vapor Brothers? <laughs> I mean, I mean, sorry, what was it? West Brothers. West Brothers, that's yeah. it. I don't know why Vapor just came to hit my head. Sorry, West Brothers. I know you guys are out there somewhere. I don't know if you're watching the show, but I know they were out there and they did some stuff for uh, some, I think for the Team Redline. Yeah, absolutely. For the uh, Redline GTP model. Yeah, but you know, in me saying it looks a lot like it, that's a high compliment. That was, that was a sim that to this day I still wait for. So hopefully it's gonna come along that well. They're gonna have licensed content and other things in this, but again, it's just getting going underway right now. That's right. Uh, speaking of underway right now, just released this week, Brazilian Stock Car Series game called Game Stock Car. And this is created by the Ritza Studios Group. And it's based on the 2011 Stock Car Brazil season. And it's an ISI based title, just like Race 07 or Arca Sim Racing. Mm -hmm. And this title includes 34 V8 powered cars that can be run on 10 different Brazilian circuits that are done with some amazing detail. Yeah, very nice. I mean, I was on Interlagos. It was gorgeous. That's one that you would know from other Sims. But the rest of these tracks, I'm telling you, you probably have never driven on before. And that's something really cool about sims that come from certain regions like Brazil where you get those home tracks. That's right. And supposedly Com8 was in on this. We just mm -hmm. talked about him last week, as a matter right. of fact, as one of the big R Factor track developers. And lots of guys that are were big in the mod community in R Factor are mm -hmm. big on the back end of this game, or basically they are the back end of this game. Yeah, it's sort of a super modding team pulled together to, to put out a new game that's very worth it. That's right. And if you're not familiar with the Brazilian Stock Car Series, it was launched in 1979 and is currently backed by two manufacturers, Chevrolet and Peugeot. Uh-oh, I said oh. that wrong. I'm sure. I How do you say it? I don't Peugeot. Even... <laughs> the series uses V8-powered race cars and reach top speeds of up to 270 kilometers per hour. Yeah. And you can try the title for free for 30 minutes and go to the link that we provided in our description here. Uh, or you can purchase the title for $29.90. And if you want to check out a full review already, Virtual R's got one up and Montoya over there has put a full written review of this title and it's very well done. So check that out if you're interested in seeing it right away. And we're going to have it actually on the show here. Yeah, actually we have it up and running right here in the background. Yes, yeah, so we'll be doing a full review here on the show, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Absolutely. Another thing that's kind of been surfacing around the web are a bunch of new iRacing 2.0 pictures. I've seen them in various different places, Facebook, uh, Virtual R, they've been all over the place, but we actually were lucky enough to get our own set that nobody else has just yet. So these are some great shots that you're looking at right now. You got the Ford GT, which is just one of everybody's all time favorite cars. You got Suzuka, which is coming along in amazing detail. I mean, this actually looks like iRacing's gone to a whole new level. It does. You know, people complain about the iRacing graphics and man, I don't know if it's the 2.0 or they're just slowly starting to step it up, but it's starting to look a lot more realistic. These yeah. car models on the Acura LMP car. That's another one. The GT that's coming and then Suzuka, that crossover. 
just looks amazing. Yeah, man. I absolutely. can't wait to turn some laps on that track. That, that right there is probably one of the coolest pictures I've ever seen in all of sim racing. That's right. So I hope you've enjoyed these screenshots. I'd like to thank Greg Hill at iRacing for getting them over to us. That's going to do it for the first half. And when we get back, some R Factor 2 screenshots along with the Drivers World Championships recap. Tania's extensive lineup of radio-controlled vehicles provides hobbyists with the joy of running exact replicas of their favorite car, tank, or off-road vehicle. Another attraction of these vehicles is their use of high-grade materials such as nylon resin, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. With precise mechanical systems, the maintenance and adjustment of the various components as well as performance upgrading with optional parts allows for truly competitive racing. For more information about Tamiya, visit us at www.tamiyausa.com. Welcome back to This Week in Sim Racing, and this week, the guys at ISI, mentioned them earlier in the show, mm -hmm. released some screenshots of R-Factor 2 and work in progress stuff, and mainly showing off like the animated crews right. that are involved, that are going to be involved in, in R-Factor 2, and they had four shots that came out and created a little controversy at one of the community sites around... In, what around kind of controversy? The exclusive thing. I guess they didn't understand what that meant over at one of the sites in our community. I believe we had some exclusive photos. We did, yeah. earlier in the show. What yeah. do you know? Yeah. So, our Factor 2 exclusive shot, great looking stuff. I am really looking forward to this. We may be having something exclusive on the show too for our Factor 2. We're so working on it. Stay tuned for that. We may have some our Factor 2 video for you guys coming up soon. But yeah, it was really cool to see that this week. Uh, next up, we have the Bodenhausen mod. And what this is, if you're wondering, a guy named John Bodden sent me an email, or maybe I sent him an email, vice versa, I'm not sure. But anyway, what this is, is he wanted to be able to convert the T500 pedals to be used as a standalone set of pedals on the PC. And he figured that a lot of people would be buying the T500 and then using other pedals, sure. like club sport pedals, sure. something like that. They're high-end users, after all, if they're buying that wheel. Exactly. So, actually, great idea. I told him, hey, that's a cool idea. We'd love to check it out. You know, we have the T500. And, matter of fact, we're one of the sim racers that aren't using our stock T500 pedals. So the way this works is the T500 has a really odd shaped phone type jack <laughs> and it's not compatible with anything. And then on the other side, it's got an adapter. And Sean, why don't you tell them what that hooks up to? That actually looks like a Logitech plug and it works with the Bodner cable. So this is the cable that would make a G25 or G27 set of pedals standalone. And again, with this adapter plugged in, it sort of does the same thing to the T500. I mean, so much so to the point that your computer's gonna think they're Logitech pedals. Yeah, so they'll exactly. be alarmed, as the instructions say. Uh, that's normal. Uh, but they will here. fully work. You can calibrate them, and they will work on their own as a second device, essentially. And that way, you can run them freely with any wheel combo you see fit. As a matter of fact, we got a pedal shootout coming up, and we're putting nine different sets of pedals against each other. Mm -hmm. Some cool stuff going on, and this is one of the set of pedals that's going to be in that shootout. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where they stand up against the club sports and the modded G27 pedals right. and all that. And you can get that mod. Uh, I think he just sent me an email, John did, saying that sim-sport.net is going to carry this, and they are also a dealer of the Bodner cable, so you can yeah. get both these. It's going to be about 50 bucks. For then the, the next challenge is going to be finding yourself a set of T500 yeah. pedals. And if you can, you know, if you're a DFGT owner or let's say a uh, Logitech G25 owner and want to step up the pedals mm -hmm. a little bit, because I'd say these are a little bit better. Absolutely. I don't know if it's worth spending all that money, but for a DFGT owner, absolutely, this yeah. would be a great set of pedals and a great yeah. upgrade. Or even, so, I mean, it's a little on the low end compared to the wheel, but even like wheels like ECCI or Frex that don't come with pedals at all. So that would be an option. So I think the, yeah, so it's about 24 bucks for this and then uh, about 30, 40, almost 40 bucks for the Bodner cable. So okay. there we have that. All right. 
And that takes us today to our race coverage, and that's the NASCAR iRacing World Championship Series. For the 12th race of the season, the series headed to Indy for 80 laps of the Brickyard. Brad Davies led the field to green after capturing the pole and qualifying. As quickly as things got underway, an early caution brought the field back down to pace car speeds once again. Despite the early caution, the event went smoothly with only three more cautions coming out, giving us much green flag racing. Davies continued to lead the field even through pit stops performed under caution. Meanwhile, points leader Alfalo worked his way towards the front and on lap 51, he put himself into second position with his sights set on Davies. Then on lap 57, under caution, the leaders all turned for pit road while Richard Teller and a handful of other drivers skipped the pits and rotated to the front. In that pit stop, Alfala passed Davies, and the two of them were now in pursuit of the guys on worn tires. With no cautions coming their way, the leaders were forced to go to the pits under green and relinquish that lead back to Alfala and Davies as they fought it out for the win. Davies proved to be a bit stronger as he made the pass stick and was able to prevent another pass by Alfala. Brad Davies would win the event, followed by Alfala, Parker, Barry and Brad Wright finishing in that order. With a second place finish, Alfala continued to grow his points lead to 31 over Brad Wright, who moved into second place overall ahead of Thomas Hazard with his fifth place finish. Next week, the series heads to Atlanta for what is sure to be an exciting race, as it'll be the first race with the new tire model, meaning the crew chiefs are basically gonna have to throw out their log books, all their setups are junk, they're starting from scratch, and that's just gonna change everything. That's gonna change the way God, these guys are driving, yeah. too. I mean, there's no pushing it big time throughout the whole run. These guys are gonna really have to baby their tires, and this Definitely. could just shift everything in the yeah. points. For everybody in iRacing. I see it more on the on the oval side than the road. And speaking of the road, with a new title sponsor, the iRacing.com NVIDIA series headed to New Hamptonshire in the UK for round 11 of 18 at the Silverstone Grand Prix. The series points battle is really getting tight with Klaus Kivikas leading over reigning world champion Gregor Hutu by just 15 points, followed by Hugo Louis and Jesse Niemannen, who took a hit after his mistake at Indy and put himself pretty much out of the running. Qualifying was another battle between the My 3 id drivers and Hutu. Niemannen sat on the pole with a 118.630, followed by Hutu with a 118.718. The start was fairly uneventful with all the cars making it safely through turn one, but Gregor would lose a spot and settle back into third behind Kivikas and Niemannen. At the back of the pack, there was an event though that involved Blake Townen and a few other cars. Back up front, Niemannen would lead the way as he got off to a great start with his teammate Kivikas in tow, followed by Hutu and Hafala. One of the best battles of the day though involved Alberto Baraldi and Vincent Stahl who swapped positions at least three or four times fighting for 10th place. On top of that, Silverstone produced at least two packs of four to six cars that fought nose to tail all race long. All the teams opted to go with a two pit stop strategy, some trying to short stint on occasion, but all pitting at least twice for fuel and tires. Gregor stretched out that middle run of the race to lap 46 when he came in for the last time. After all the stops were complete, the defending champ found himself right on the rear wing of Niemannen, who had led all laps except the ones during pit cycles. So Gregor had quite a pit stop, and by laying down those near world record lap times, is now in second place, and Frosty, this is gonna be a barn burner, man. This is gonna come down to the wire. We were actually curious if Niemann could handle the pressure after his big mistake at Indy that cost him a shot at the title. This is when two very close calls took place that almost took out both Niemann and Hutu. On lap 48, as Gregor got within striking distance of Niemann, the first close call took place when Maximilian Wiedmeyer lost the handle right in front of Hutu, spinning across the track and coming within inches of Gregor's front wing. To hunt for the championship. Oh, someone's off right in front of Gregor. Oh, oh! Almost touches Gregor. Gregor just snakes by. What a moment. We've got to see that on replay, folks. If Gregor didn't slow just a bit here, his day may have been over. But that wasn't the last moment. With eight laps to go, Team Redline driver Dom Dewan, who's also teammates and good friends with Hutu, had a moment that could have sent all involved to the hospital with cardiac arrests. Dom, who was struggling with damage to his rear wing, lost control right in front of Niemannen while spinning, almost collected Hutu in the same exact spot of the Wittmeyer incident. That would spread the two apart enough to let Jesse have some breathing room and grab his fourth win of the season. Gregor finished second by less than three tenths of a second, followed by Kivikas, Louis, 
and McLean. Points are getting even more interesting every week, and after 11 and before drops, Kivikas has 377 points, followed by Hutu, who is just 10 points back. After drops, Hutu is shown with a two-point lead. To view what's current in all of the iRacing World Championship Series, make sure to bookmark our DWC page at our site, which we got in here in our description. And you can watch the races from right there, as a matter of fact, too. We have all the standings posted there. You can watch the races right from there on PSR TV. So make sure to check out that page that we've got set up there. Absolutely, where you're going to find our very own Darren Ganji and Frosty St. Clair on the mic for the Road Series and the Oval Series as well. So definitely stay no, tuned. No, we're not on the Oval Series. Well, no, you guys are on the Road Series. Got to give props to those guys. Daryl Morley, Tim Terry, and Nim Cross handle the, the Oval side. So. Absolutely. So all in all, you got great guys broadcasting these races. A lot of fun. Check it out on PSR TV. That's right. And if you guys want your leagues on this show, give us an email. Send us an email, info at insidesimracing.tv. You, you need to give us a little help. We can't do it all, but you know, if you've got a broadcast race that we can sure. pull from, big race that's coming up you want us to announce here on the show, let us know. You know, yeah. This isn't just about the iRacing World Championships, this, which is pretty much the best racing going on in sim racing right Absolutely. now. But Get your league here on the show. We want to hear about it. We want to tell everybody else out there about it. Definitely. So. Contact us. Get us a replay. Get us a write-up. Whatever. We definitely want to cover you. That's right. That's going to pretty much wrap it up this week, isn't it? Absolutely. Good show. Yeah, it was. Uh, if you're interested in uh, getting in touch with us, go to our site, InsideSimRacing.tv, and sign up for our forums. Join in on the conversation. Lots of stuff coming up this week. we got that pedal shootout we talked about. Pedal should run a little long. It's taking a little longer to get through all of them and really test them at their fullest, but that's definitely coming soon. Also, we got that... Freck shifter that's coming out as Freck well. Freck sequential shifter. That's <laughs> going to be really cool to check out. The Bodenhausen, well, that's going to be in the pedal shootout. We already told mm -hmm. you about that. So make sure you check out all that and more at our site, InsideSimRacing.tv. I'm Darren Ganji. Sean Cole. We'll see you on the track.